Kia ora guys, welcome back to Capital E Science Jam. I am Professor Inventus and today we are going to three, two, one, blast off and learn about rockets. How does a rocket work? Well, have you ever put energy into a balloon? When you blow up a balloon, <laughs> the energy gets stretched into the rubber walls, just like a stretchy rubber band. If I tie it off, then the energy stays in the balloon, but if I let it go, all of the energy comes straight out of one end. A rocket is very, very similar to that. It has a lot of energy pressed inside it and all of the energy is forced straight out one end. So what are rockets for? Well, people used to explore with boats and cars and horses and carts and aeroplanes. And they got very, very good at exploring the whole of the planet Earth. And they thought there was nothing as big as Earth. Vast and unending and huge, enormous. Then, once all of the countries were mapped and people were living everywhere, two countries decided that they wanted to show off. So... The leader of one country, America, said, we are going to make a rocket. Not just a little balloon rocket, the biggest, heaviest rocket that's ever been made. So big that we are going to put three people inside the very top of the rocket and we're going to send that rocket not around the world, not across the biggest ocean, not even into the sky, but further than that. He said to the people, we are going to put these three people in their rocket onto the moon. It was a mad idea, almost impossible to comprehend, and nobody thought it could be done. And there's a reason for that. To get three people inside a rocket, up and out of the air that is heavy and thick surrounding the earth full of clouds it would take lots and lots and lots and lots of energy more than a banana more than a car it would take as much energy as there is in 43 jumbo jets <gasps> 43 now what would happen if you put that much energy inside one rocket well, what happens if you put too much energy inside one balloon? <laughs> it popped. And many, many rockets did pop until they made the Saturn V. The Saturn V has a secret. Shall we set it off? Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> At the bottom of the Saturn V were enormous engines that blasted fuel and fire straight down into the ground. It created a white light that could be seen for miles. Now, the Saturn V went really, really fast, but very quickly, the bottom part of the Saturn V ran out of fuel. That's exactly what it was supposed to do. This is, in fact, not one rocket, but five. So, the part that had run out of fuel broke away and sailed back down to Earth. Then, a new rocket began with new fuel 
That way, you could fit 43 jumbo jets worth of energy into one trip. The second part of the rocket pushed it another 100 kilometers until it ran out of fuel as well. And then it broke away as well. What was left was still nowhere near the moon. The rocket had broken free of all of the air that is in our planet, but it was still being held down by the gravity. As it fell towards the Earth, it moved past it at the same time, and it went round and round our planet, like the water going round the plug hole in your bath. It got faster and faster until it was a bit like a poi on the end of a string. The astronauts inside pushed a little button, released a tiny extra rocket, and in that rocket was enough energy to cut that string. And when the poi was let go, it hurtled across space and to the moon. By the time the astronauts made it to the moon, they abandoned all of their rockets, apart from just one little craft. This is called the lunar lander. There's no air on the moon, so the only way to slow down is to have a rocket pushing against the surface as it falls. Eventually, it touched down on the moon. The whole planet, all the people on the whole enormous Earth, were tuned in onto their televisions and watched it happen from their homes and their businesses. They all saw as the door on the lunar lander opened and two men climbed down a ladder and stepped onto the moon for the first time. What do you think it looked like, the moon? Was it beautiful with trees and plants and animals? Were there flowers? Was there oceans and beaches? Well, everyone who looked at the moon saw it exactly the same as it looked from far away. It was flat and bumpy and dusty and gray. The astronauts discovered a few rocks that were important. It wasn't a very interesting place to be. But while those astronauts were standing on the moon, something amazing happened. A tiny blue ball rose up above the horizon, shiny and perfect and smooth. And the astronauts realized they were looking at their home, the Earth. It wasn't a big, enormous, unending planet. It was just a tiny, delicate little marble floating out in the middle of nothingness, precious and beautiful. Everyone in the world saw the Earth from this distance. Something changed that day. Only a few years after the moonrise photo was taken, the president of the most powerful country on the planet decided that the government had a job to care for this delicate little planet and started the Environmental Protection Agency. At the same time, a group of people from around the world decided that they were going to put time and effort into caring for these blue oceans and these green landscapes. And they created 
an organization called Greenpeace. Only three years after the moon landing, the whole world had a new perspective. And I think that is the true gift that rockets have given us. Thanks for joining us. Oh, 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 oh. thanks for joining us. See you next time. Takita.